going on Dolphins? It's your boy Dylan. Um, I'm just making this video because I just happen to be, you know, watching some stuff on YouTube, some videos. Um, you know, I watched some Dougley Do Wrong and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I watch his shows. I don't agree with him on a lot of things, but that's okay. Um, you know, I watched some of his stuff. I watched uh, this Good Morning Football uh, clip on YouTube um, where they're talking about it. They're actually talking about Gase, uh, you know, going to the Jets. But there's a couple things I wanted to, to point out and talk about. So first of all, let's keep in mind that while, you know, Gase got fired and he's now with the Jets, with Sam Darnold, with that good, with a good defense, he's, uh, you know, Dow Loggins is probably going to be his offensive coordinator. Um, oh, who is it? Is his defensive coordinator? Greg Williams. Uh, as his defensive coordinator look man he's he's getting his staff together and he's gonna you know make some noise he's gonna do some good things there um you know but um you know they were talking about uh kyle brant was talking about how you know what he, adam gase is one of his favorite oh well, uh, before i get to that the point i was gonna make is is that while you know we fired him and stuff we actually still owe him i think 10 million dollars for this year so he's gonna get paid we're gonna have to pay him uh the dolphins stephen ross is gonna have to pay him for this year i mean he should have just kept him he should have just kept him I'm, I'm telling you man this is going to be uh a huge backfire on stephen ross anyway so that's one point is is that we we still owe the dude like 10 fucking million dollars for this year so he's gonna he's gonna be banking because he's gonna get paid by the dolphins and the jets um, so he's going to probably get paid by the, and I hope this is wrong and, and I know it's a skeptical, uh, outlook, but if he does end up, if the Jets end up beating us this season, even just one time, but if they end up beating us both times, he's going to be getting paid by us to beat us. Okay, cool. Fine. Whatever. Um, also though, they, Kyle Brandt was talking about how, uh, Gase is his favorite coach in the league because he doesn't give a fuck. Because he doesn't fucking listen to dumbass media motherfuckers that talk about shit that they don't know what the fuck they're even talking about, right? And so, the, you know, they played a couple clips from some of his press, press conferences where he basically was like, look, man, he, he even said, he's like, look, it, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, all right? So I'm tired of answering your stupid ass questions about shit that doesn't even matter when you're not even fucking coming at it from a perspective of, you know, having the full context, the facts and the data and so on and so forth. And so Adam Gase actually, in a lot of the coverage, you know, recently, that's part of the reason why they said he got fired because of his attitude. Dude, I loved his attitude. That was one of the things that was so amazing about Adam Gase is, is that he's not going to sit. And he even said, too, I don't need to lobby for my job. I, I, I you know, I was brought in here to do things my way. And that's what I'm going to do, you know. And again, man, he was on the verge. He was on the verge. You know, and so to talk about Brian Flores a little bit, and again, you know, I, I'm not going to do, you know, the full uh, video uh, profile profile video on him until he's actually announced uh, as our head coach, um, which, you know, he can't be right now because the Patriots still have to play tomorrow. But I mean, look, you know, he's going to be in the same position Adam Gase was, um, you know, when he started being that he's going to be a first time head coach. Uh, he's not going to know what the fuck's going on, really. He's going to have to adjust. He's going to have to start building his culture and get chemistry with his players. He's starting from scratch, just like Adam Gase did. Right. OK, but um, so, you know, I mean, look, in three years and but the di one of the big differences, it differences, though, between then and now is, is then he or Stephen Ross did not hit even close. He didn't hit the reset button. He's I would argue he's still not hitting the reset button. I still think he's doing it very half assed, which I, I it historically hasn't worked out uh, for him, for us, for this team, whatever. Um, but you know, I mean, in three years, you know, if we, if we do end up, you know, only winning a few games for the next few years, well, is he going to keep Brian Flores around long enough to give him a chance to get things settled in and to, to, you know, build the locker room that he wants to, to make sure he's got the coaching staff that he wants to keep in mind, 
Vance Joseph, the defensive coordinator, for what anybody thinks about him, he left to be a head coach after one year with us. So then we had to, he had to change his, now he, you know, brought Matt Burke in because he expected that that was going to be the case, but he doesn't get, you know, credit for planning ahead and, and, you know, whatever. He doesn't get credit for shit, but man, I'm telling you, and look, I, I didn't even, part of me didn't even want to make this video because I'm, you know, I hate talking about it. It kind of gets me down a little bit, you know, and, but I just, man, I'm just trying to impress upon, you know, you guys, Dolphins fans, my viewers that it just, it was premature. It was unwarranted. And I mean, we are going to. We are just, and again, man, I, I can't say it enough. I hope I'm so wrong about all this, but it just, from the data that I have and what I feel inside me, and so I, I make these shows for you guys, and so I gotta be honest with you. I can't lie to you. I gotta be real, and I gotta tell you how it is. Just the way, you know, with the, with the information and data that I have, and again, it is relatively limited, but from the information that I have and the way I feel, man, I just... I feel like all the pieces are now, you know, falling into place for us to be not just an average team, you know, because the past couple decades we've been stuck in mediocrity, right? We've been stuck kind of in the center. Gase showed a lot of potential and promise to finally be able to take us out of that. But now with this move, I really feel like we're going to end up being a dumpster fire. I feel like we're going to end up being in the fucking, you know, shitholes of the AFC East while the Patriots are still around with the, the Jets. I, I feel like now are going to be so much better next year. And it's just, and then look, you know, again, I, I feel like Dolphins fans are like wanting that because I just, I don't understand how people could feel like this was really necessary. Like, we were on the verge, man. We were on the verge of really being a contender. And again, our owner even said, well, we might not even be competitive for two, three years. Jesus Christ, why? Why do Dolphins fans want that? And then, you know, now we're gonna talk about, uh, well, Tannehill's probably gonna get, um, you know, cut or what have you. Oh my God, oh my God. What are our options? The options in free agency are garbage. Colin Kaepernick, if you guys want to have a conversation about getting him, fine. Then I would actually entertain, you know, I would be ha I mean, we can have the conversations regardless, but it would make more sense to me if somebody was like, "Hey, you know, we should we should sign Colin Kaepernick." And then and then draft a guy and then you know Colin Kaepernick could be the interim whatever quarterback but that's not gonna happen we all know that's not gonna happen and but then who else is out there in free agency we're we gonna get Cutler again is Brock Osweiler gonna be the guy no we have Luke Falk and we just signed that other quarterback but those are young raw guys that we don't know shit about that are gonna take time to come up and have to be groomed you know they might not even be all that good David fails well he's not really uh, you know, and, and a lot of these guys now, Brock Osweiler, David Fails, they probably won't even be around next year. Okay, so then what in the draft? We're going to be drafting middle of the pack. There aren't very, uh, you know, in each round. So we're there aren't even very, very many good quarterback options. The ones that are good are going to get taken at the top of the draft. So, I mean, I don't understand. It's, it's, it's so, to me, it's just so nonsensical. And, and people are like, I don't know if you guys have ever heard the, the saying, you know, cut, cutting your own nose off to spite your face. Like, uh, I don't get it. I don't get it. Why? Why are we like handicapping ourselves? These moves are handicapping ourselves and we are just, we are, we are like, you know, setting ourselves up for failure. I just, I, I don't get it. Like I said, I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I Nothing would make me happier to, in a year from now, be able to be like, you know what? Uh, while Adam Gase might be having a really good year with the Jets, because I hope he does, 
not necessarily because he's with the Jets, but because I really like Adam Gase and I hope he has a good career. I know he's gonna, but even though he's having a good year with them, we swept the Jets. We actually had a better year than what was expected. Brian Flores or whoever the fuck our head coach is is doing great. I hope that I'll be able to say that. I do. You have no idea how much it would please me and make me happy to be able to say that. Unfortunately, I consider myself to be a very logical person, a very reasonable person. I like to make sure that I have all the facts, all the data, that I take in multiple sources, that I have the full context, you know, that I approach things logically, reasonably, and so on and so forth. And that coupled with the way I'm feeling about this, it just doesn't look very good and it doesn't look very promising and, you know, I just... I don't know. So, you know, I wanted to talk about that a little bit because I just got incensed. You know, I just got, uh, I just, I had to, man, because, you know, I just, uh, and, the, and look, I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to do my due diligence to, you know, give you guys a, a good profile and whoever our next coach is. I'm going to try my hardest and my best to be as optimistic and as and as upbeat for you guys as I possibly can be. But I got to be real. I got to be honest. I got to give you the full context and the full, you know, information and all that stuff. You know, and I got to keep it real, man. I got to keep it real. And so, you know, it just, I don't know, man. We'll see how things go. You know, like I said, I hope I hope it turns out better than what I expect, but we'll see. I hope I'm wrong. But and here's the thing, though. So let's again, if I'm wrong, I'll be so happy to say it and we can move on and we can we can go on to a bright future. But if I'm not wrong, then what? Then what? What if this? So, you know, if you guys respond to this video, tell me what what if i am right let's just just think about and and again i hope to god this has nothing to do with me trying to be right i just want to be wrong so bad but what if i'm right what if i'm right what if adam gase goes to make goes to the to the new york jets and instead of it being the miami dolphins as the next as the front runner as the next team to dethrone the patriots what if it ends up being the jets and what if we just end up not being mediocre but what if we end up sucking for the next few years and then because of that adam gase and all of the fans they lose their patience and then brian flores gets fired and then all these other people get fired and you know we keep piecemealing and all this other shit. what if i am right just think of it from that perspective for a minute and think about it. What if I am right? I mean, it's going to be a catastrophe. It really is. Anyway, I just had to get those things out there. Just some off the chest shit. So now I'm going to go back to being a happy Dolphins fan. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to cut it here. I hope you guys do, you know, at least enjoy you know having another perspective a different perspective because everybody man you know pretty pretty much everybody else all the other you know media national media dolphins media the other podcasters they all have different opinions than i do so i at least hope you guys can appreciate and respect a different perspective it, even if you don't think i'm right so if you do i hope you guys enjoy you know or, or i hope if you do then you you know reasonably would enjoy my videos and if you do enjoy my videos i hope you hit the subscribe button i hope you hit the like button i hope you uh hit the bell if you want to get my alerts for the videos uh my nose is itching real bad um <laughs> Make sure you leave your questions, comments, and concerns down in the comment section. And of course, as always, make sure you follow me on Twitter at Dylan Tartaro. And with that, I am out. I'll see y'all soon. I hope I'm wrong. I do so much. I want good things for this team and for this franchise and for this uh, fan base. Um, so with that, I'm out. I'll see y'all soon. Fins up.